Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, even under conditions like these, partly cloudy, partly sunny, all systems have been getting full every single day. Just couldn't be happier with the solar conditions. Even though they're not pristine, it appears I'm over paneled enough now to make up on these days where there's a lot of intermittent clouds rolling through. Everything looking good. So in today's project, we're going to dovetail off a couple of the last videos that I've done. A couple videos ago, we did a review on this, found some uh, mixed results on this in Joybot. 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It is still currently hooked up and just sitting here in float every day. But because I had that 24 volt inverter fail me the other day, and I made a video about that as well, gonna slide this in where the 24 volt battery is and resort or revert that uh, charging station from 24 volt back to 12 volt and put this into production. And as you may recall, I had this reliable 800 watt, 24 volt pure sine wave inverter fail on me, blew the fuse inside. I tried to replace it, it blew immediately again. So as many of you have commented on the possible problems for that, uh, which I don't personally know, uh, what the problem is, but I believe some of you guys were right on target with with what was happening. Anyway, suffice it to say, that's dead in the water. Uh, the time USB is sitting here at 100% full and has been since that inverter blew. I wanted to go ahead and charge it up before I pull this out and just put it on the shelf until I resolve uh, getting another 24 volt inverter. So what I'm going to do is slide that enjoy bot into this system and I'll change the charge controller from 24 volt to 12 volt, which you can just program that on the Victron app. And I'll show you how I do that. But basically just going to revert this back to a 12 volt charging station. Going to pull that inverter out here in a minute and put that other 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter so we can get back to making coffee off of this system in the mornings. <laughs> and I'll go over this as I show you what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the solar panels. As you can see, the green light indicates that this battery is in float. And like I said, it has been since the inverter fail. So I'm gonna go here to the solar isolator switch Shut those panels off, that green light will go off. And now there's no solar coming in to that battery, even just to hold it at float. And now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the breakers. And this one is between the charge controller and the positive bus bar. And it's just a little 50 amp breaker that I put in there just in case my solar panel array ever tried to do anything over uh, 50 amps. Disconnected. Going to come down here to this 100 amp breaker. Disconnect that. <clears throat> so everything's disconnected. I can go ahead and take these battery cables off now and then I'll slide that enjoy bot in there and pull this inverter out put the other inverter in and tie it all back together. And we'll turn that back into a 12 volt charge controller. And this particular charge controller can be uh, configured for either a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. And of course we've had it running at 24 volts along with a 24 volt inverter and a 24 volt battery. So be pretty easy switch over put the battery back in there put the 12 volt pure sine wave inverter there and then on the Victron app we'll reconfigure that back to 12 volt and should be back up and running here pretty quick 
Okay, so that was super easy. Just four screws is all I had the inverter mounted with. Popped those out, pulled that right off. We know that's DOA. Uh, dead, dead, dead. And I hate to be pulling that time USB battery out, that 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery, because that thing has worked so good for so many months. And I just left it tied up the way it is so I could get it back up to a full charge before I put it into storage. Uh, put it on the shelf for a while while I decide what to do about uh, the next 24 volt inverter I might want to run. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to miss that because that thing has been amazing. So anyway, super easy. You know, I'm just going to stick the other inverter right there. We'll tie up these inverter cables to it and drop in the other 12 volt battery here and get going back to a 12 volt system here. And now going to do much the same thing here. This is that temporary charging station that I've had set up in the yard. 300 watts of solar out there running in on some extension cables to this temporary charging station that I did the review on this EnjoyBot battery along with this PSW Con 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter which I've been using for a long time. It works well. I don't believe it's available anymore so there won't be any links to that. But anyway, same kind of thing. It's, in, it's sitting here in float. Green light right there. Same thing. First thing, shut that off. Now it just goes back to the blue light flashing, which means it's on, and that's only because it still is connected to the battery. And we're going to pop that off here real quick and then slide the battery and this into place of that 24 volt system. Okay, that only took a couple of minutes, of course, and went back together nice. I wasn't real happy about these uh, cables coming in and going. Uh, from the inverter over this breaker that I've got. Uh, the way I had it before was up a little higher. Things have moved around a little bit, but this will still work well for the purposes, uh, my purposes anyway. But I've got some extra cables, but I'm building a different system with that. So I'll probably reconfigure this whole thing. I just wanted to get my little 12 volt station back up and running. And I've got the... <clears throat> enjoy bot tied up and ready to go so i can go ahead and start turning these breakers back on and then once uh, the charge controller has power again from the battery i should see this station pop up these are other stations that i've got running so i'll do that real quick and we should see it pop up here on the app so what I did, I flipped that breaker on and then I flipped this breaker back on. And now if I look at the top here, that's what I had named 24 volt system. And so I'm going to go into the app and change that back to just another auxiliary 12 volt system. But I don't have any power coming in from the solar panels yet. But it did turn the charge controller back on, as you can see with that blue flashing light. So now I'll reconfigure the charge controller real quick. So here's the app and I'll go up here and then I'll put the uh, battery and you can see that it's still set for 24 volts. And I'm going to change that now back to 12 volts. So you just click it on and then push 12 volt. Confirm your change. And that's just uh, six zeros. If you just go with the default code, you can program that. But I just will go with six zeros. And press OK. OK. And what's it say? Be aware that setting a wrong battery voltage can cause permanent damage to the batteries. We know that. Make sure you selected the value matches your battery bank. So, code. 
I guess it's giving me a different code to put in there. 9581. Okay. And that took, and now it's set for 12 volt. I've got 300 watts of panels, three 100 watt panels tied in series, the same amount for this system that I've been doing. And you can see with the green check mark there, the battery voltage is now set to 12 volts. So I should be okay to go ahead, flip this back on. Got the blue charging light. I'll come back here. And there we go. Now I'll rename it. It's still named 24 volts. That's just the name I give this particular station. I will change that. But like I said, this battery uh, was already in float out there. So you saw maybe just a few watts going in there. One watt just to hold it at 14.1. So that all looks good. Yeah, so that was a real easy switch. So now I've got this back to a 12 volt charging station with a 12 volt battery in there. It's completely full. And I will show you how I can change that from calling it my 24 volt system. You go back here. You press up there. You press product info. And then it gives you the name my custom name was 24 volts. I can edit that by pushing this here, press edit, and then I can go to here. I can delete that and I'll just name it real quick, 12 volt. And I'll just put 12 volt station. And that does it. Now it's changed. It took, I believe. So let me go back here. And there you can see. So now it's just called 12 volt station. And that's all I need to do. And now that it's a 100% full, and I know this battery's 100% full, I'll go and change the parameters on this uh, battery monitor which does show 100% full, but I will change it to a 200 amp hour uh, battery. It was all set for the 24 volt, but all I have to do now is tell that, that this is 100% full, and then I can just look and at a glance, get my percentage of uh, state of charge. Pretty close, that's a pretty accurate battery monitor. So that's all it took to change the 24 volt system to back to a 12 volt system, which is what it was before we started running that time USB battery, which I do hope to get that back up into production pretty quick because that battery is amazing. Uh, and I do like the higher voltage. Also run a 48 volt out here, which I've reviewed. And we'll go back and talk about that some more, but I'm liking the higher voltage. And there it is. You know, it kicked it back into, you know, it shows full absorption or, or it's in the absorption mode rather. So it's just going to go ahead and, and you know, put that back into a uh, float. Which that brings me to another thing. I should check the parameters, my charging parameters, and see what they are. And that's exactly what I use here for the 12 volt system. I just let Victron do its thing because it works perfectly for most purposes out here. So 14.2 is the absorption voltage, 13.5 is the float voltage. And I've been running that. I've had to adjust that a little bit on the system in the back. I just uh, let it go up to 14.1. It seems to work a little bit better, but all good. And just as a last little test, let's Turn this on, make sure we don't blow any fuses. 
And I'm good to go. The coffee making station is back in operation. So everything's good. Turn that back off. And that's it. That's all it took to switch that back over from 24 to 12 volt. I did a video going from 12 volt to 24. It was just the same thing, but in reverse. And it worked very well for many, many months. Okay, and the last thing I did to make this to where I know everything that's going on with this at, at the glance of either the mount monitor or on the app is I told it now that we're working with a 200 amp hour battery. So I set that and then I can press here and there it is, 200 amp hours. And then I can show that it is at 100% full. So now I have just at a glance, I can watch what this is doing. And I can also just at a glance with the app, like I showed you, see the same thing. So very easy. It literally took a wrench, some pliers, and a Phillips head screwdriver to change this out and make it this. And now we'll start making that uh, EnjoyBot uh, work every day so I can let you guys know how that's doing. If you watch that last video on that, you notice we ran across some interesting things about the cells in there. And then I'm going to redo that uh, low temperature disconnect and see if we can't get that to work. So there it is, back in operation. Pretty simple. Very happy now. So that was the project in paradise today. <laughs> Uh, thanks as always for tuning in everybody getting a little more gray, but every one of my systems is sitting at 100% full. So everything's looking pretty darn good. Hope it is where you are. Aloha.